here is Ron Johnson trying to talk to outside the beltway. Remember, Ron Johnson is both sees his support amongst uh, the the QAnon Republican Party, which is a vast majority. You know, we're talking 50, 60 percent of Republicans believe that Donald Trump is actually still the president or is actually the real president. Uh, this is these are Ron Johnson's people. And here is his attempt. Um, and it is it is also going to fail. But listen to this. There's a manufacturer I talked to in Wisconsin. Average wage that he's offering is $20 an hour. He's got 1,000 jobs that are not going to be filled, that he can't fill. In Wisconsin, our, our, our unemployment rate is at 3.8%. So again, commodities will go up and down, but as that labor shortage, which, by the way, is created by government action. You know, we're, we're flooding the, the marketplace with dollars, personal savings, pent-up demand. That's going to fuel inflation. But the fact that we have incentivized people to stay on the sidelines, not engage in the, in the labor market, and not offer their services is going to drive up the price of labor. That doesn't go up and down. That only ratchets up in one direction. Now, you may say, that, hey, that's good. If you get a 5 percent wage increase, it's not very good, though, if prices go up 6 or 7 percent, which is what we're on a trajectory to achieve. That, that is sticky inflation. That's here to stay. And my concern is that creates an expectation of future inflation. And, and I, I, I know I'm reading articles saying there's no way we could ever return to stagflation. I'm seeing the conditions. I'm seeing the ingredients being concocted here for potential stagflation. All right, first off, he, everything he is saying is, con, con, everything he says in that first half of the statement contradicts everything else. Uh, and at one point, he starts to realize, like, wait a second, I'm proposing that people get a 5% bump in pay. Uh, that's not great because we're going to have inflation that's going to be greater than that. Now, what we have is a situation where, yes, demand has increased. Uh, I think it was Macy's and a couple other, like, uh, department stores have seen the, the number of shoppers in just the past, like, two weeks shoot up by 45% or something. Um, we are now at uh, the lowest level of unemployment claims that we've had since going through COVID. It is dropping. It's still a lot. 400,000 new uh, people seeking claims, which cuts against the idea that we are out of the woods in terms of unemployment. Although, I mean, those numbers contradict what McConnell was just saying about how we're seeing these effects in the economy. But Right. The economy is, is getting better. Like the idea that there's increased demand, it's really just a question of our production capacity, which was everybody shut down because of COVID. Once that gets back up uh, to speed... And that 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 supply matches the demand. We're going to be fine. So the 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 inflation. There's no reason to believe this inflation is going to uh, last. However, there's probably going to be a little bit of uh, inflation when it comes to labor, which means that people are going to get paid more. And frankly, to the extent that there is inflation, you've got uh, 1.5, 1.7 trillion dollars worth of student debt out there. If you're holding some of that student debt, if, uh, if you owe that money, a little bit of inflation is going to be uh, exactly what you want. I mean, the, the, for, for people who have borrowed money, which is a lot of Americans, inflation is not necessarily a bad thing at all. And no. so he's sitting there worried about stagflation, which, as a reminder, means that there's no economic growth, but prices go up. But here he is leading off with saying that there's this huge demand out there. And so if there's this huge demand, and people start to come online with their production and their, uh, and their supply. How do you have stagnant? How do you have a stagnant economy in that situation? Well, that you don't. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Like the, the, the stagflation concerns are completely made up. I mean, there's not any scenario in which that is going to happen in the coming months slash years. You can talk about inflation all you want, but that concern is overblown as we've seen even like center lib type economists 
like, you know, the people in the Biden administration, Janet Yellen, for example, they've found that those concerns are not that important. You know, it, it's not going to be determinative of any kind of growth in the economy or lack thereof. And so this is the pivot, though, that you're talking about, Sam. This is this, this is I mean, this is the pivot. This is fr from 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 deficits. We're in it was the deficit era of the past, you know, whatever, multiple decades uh, uh, coming to heights in the Obama era. And uh, now we're in the inflation era of Republican fear mongering well, about government spending. To be fair, they also were uh, fear mongering about inflation in the wake of the 2008 crisis when we were hearing about Q uh, quantitative easing one and two and quantitative easing three. And Glenn Beck is in front of his uh, blackboard and saying that we are uh, Weimar Germany. Uh, and David Stockman, the former um, uh, budget uh, office of management budget uh, under the uh, Reagan administration, was saying that we are just months away from China basically um, foreclosing on us. And, and all of that uh, uh, failed to, to come. Because that's about. how that works, right? right. Yeah. And, and but the, the interesting thing about uh, Ron Johnson there, last thing to say about him is there may be a reason why no one you're reading is saying there's any validity to the fear of stagflation. And that is because maybe there's just no validity to the fear of stagflation. But they're going to try. They're going to fish around. They're going to, they're going to muddle through this. And we're going to hear a lot of these stories about, you know, a thousand jobs that would come to uh, your local town if it wasn't for the fact that people were demanding more than 20 bucks an hour or $22 an hour because of how generous the unemployment benefits will be. That uh, I think is going to fall on deaf ears because you've got people who are like, well, uh, I'm, I'm getting that money or those people are spending it in my store or they're spending it at my business. Uh, so, I mean, that money's going somewhere. You, the people who are getting unemployment checks are not just fattening up their personal savings. They are using it to live and to pay for rent uh, and, and, and to pay for the food. So, um, I mean, that's the, documented, that they, but you know, maybe they're just putting it under their mattress, Sam, just, just cause even though they can't make rent or they're not able to buy groceries for their kids, maybe just for fun, they're burying it in the backyard. Could very well be. That could be the big problem that we're seeing, except for he's also saying there's a huge amount of demand out there. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back uh, with more after this.